is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become a Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people towards the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiping glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Gospel on this Resurrection Sunday comes to us from the 28th chapter of St. Matthew. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Resurrection Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of life, master over death, alpha and omega, we worship you this day. With the rising of the sun, you have raised Jesus Christ and delivered him from death's dominion. Lift us up in the depths of a week filled with defeat and agony. Help us on this glad morning to capture a glimpse of hope and meaning for our lives. O Lord, you are a risen Lord, promising your presence in every day of life. O Lord, teach us of that morning so long ago and its connection with the mornings of our lives now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Happy Easter from Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I'm preaching here in an empty, in an empty uh, congregation right now. It's uh, each Easter we hear the same story of shock and surprise experienced by everyone at the empty tomb as well as the appearance of the risen Christ every year. What a surprise it is, though, and the surprise that changed the first disciples and changed our lives as well, that life would never be the same again. The surprise of God's grace in the rising of Jesus, God's given to us and for us, the gift of life both here and now, and promised for all eternity because of Easter morning. No other surprise in the history of humankind can be so transformative. Surprises, of course, can be fun. We had a parishioner the other this just this spring. Uh, they, they surprised their children and they went down to Florida. And they didn't tell. They didn't tell them except the oldest until they were already in the car. The bags were packed already and they were already on their way down to Florida before they even figured out what was going on where mom and dad was sending them. Surprises also can be fun. Driving into a playground with our five and four year old. They see the playground and they go, ooh and ah, maybe that playground in the fast food joint always gets them. Or maybe when I pull out the gummy worms for them, oh, they're always so surprised at that. Perhaps you're surprised when your mother-in-law calls you from the airport and says that her flight has been canceled and that she's gotta come back and be with you for another 24 hours. That's a surprise as well. Surprises can be so lovely and awesome, yet unfortunately there are some which are not so happy. Surprises of a sudden death or a car accident or a new diagnosis. Surprises like our pandemic that we are going through. I didn't know that 
If you had told me two months ago that I'd be doing video productions in, a, in an empty church, I would have laughed at you. We were surprised. The whole world was surprised that the whole world came to a, a screeching stop because of an invisible pandemic virus that's floating in the air. By their very nature, surprises catch us unaware, maybe unprepared by the changes of our lives that, that we will experience. Yet we know the truth of all surprises, that God is in them all. Always God is with us, just as God in Christ Jesus changed the world with the surprise of the resurrection. The stories that we will hear in the weeks following Easter are all full of surprises, especially told in Acts and Jesus' appearance to the disciples, to the winds of Pentecost and the disciples giving a new language and new hearing, to the way their lives were totally transformed, to, to, to those who are newly baptized in Christ's name and live as a family of faith. The surprise of the resurrection sets off a change of events that continue to this day. Just as the bolt of lightning and the angel came down and the, and the guard shook like angry men and the, the women had no idea where Jesus was at and all of a sudden Jesus shows up and says, Hello, peace be with you. Go and tell my, my brothers and sisters in Galilee that I will see them there. Surprises. There's a lot of surprises in today's gospel. We're surprised today to shelter in place that we are safer at home. But we need to remember that the surprises of the world are only temporary. The surprise that God gave us on that Easter was for eternity. That everything that's happening with this pandemic will go away. And it's only temporal. But the promise, the surprise that God gave us on that first Easter is for eternity. Do you know that the air molecules that we've been all talking about with this pandemic have been around since the days of Christ? Quite a surprising revelation. If Christ, therefore, is in these molecules, the resurrected Christ is in these molecules, there is going to be healing. There is healing. There will be an answer to this pandemic and to all our prayers this day. For those who have perished and those who are perishing, they too have the breath of air that Christ breathed. Surprising, yet true. And that's the resurrection promise. We are asked to put on a mask, and we should. We, we should. The first disciples, they breathe that air of the resurrected Christ. Of course, we also do breathe sin, yet you breathe the good news as well of new life. New life through our baptism, through the water and the word. We live out this baptism in our life because we are truly Easter people. We are a resurrected people. And each Easter catches those first disciples very unaware and change them forever. God gives them not only a, a new calling in life, but a new way of living life in community. God works these mighty acts of transformation in those first disciples empowering them to tell the story of Jesus, to share the good news with those they meet, and to be open to the power of God leading and guiding them. We develop a, 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 a spiritual habit of welcoming the unpredictable and surprising God in our midst. And we wrestle with the promptings of the Holy Spirit. and the We too, as disciples of Jesus have been transformed by God's mighty act of surprise. Our lives are very different because we have met the risen Christ. We too can cultivate the, the spiritual practices and, and habit of, of welcoming the unpredictable and surprising God and wrestling with the changes of the Holy Spirit that prompts us to live in us and to live within our community. It's a whole new ball game out there, friends, in 2020, the spring of 2020, of what it means to be church in this pandemic. We cannot meet face to face. We cannot shake hands in peace. We cannot, we cannot make amends with our neighbor. I can't even pass out the palm branches because I don't want to increase an, a risk of encounter, of transmission. We have to have a new understanding, of course, of, of patience this day. A paradigm shift, can we say. 
a, a shift from working at our workplaces to, to working from home, to teaching our kids from home, relying on our, our children and grandchildren to get us what we need at the store because we don't want to have that risk of encounter. Perhaps in this season, you will undertake doing some acts of love and surprise in the world. And I challenge you this day, just like we have those, those thank cards where we, like, we say what we're thankful for. Perhaps this day we should, because it's Easter and that Easter surprise that God gave us on that first Easter, maybe we should pull out a, a pad of paper and start writing down some surprises that we can give to our family members, to our neighbors, to our church members, to our, to our co-workers this day. You might pay a course, maybe pay for a stranger's lunch. You can invite someone you, jo you don't know to join you for a walk. Of course, in this day and age with all the medical professionals out there, if you see a first responder, a nurse, or doctor, thank them for the job that they do. Thank a teacher, your mail carrier, the cashier at the grocery store, or the garbage man for the job they do. Surprise them maybe with a small treat. Most of all, though, listen for God in all the many ways that God surprises us with love, grace, and peace. Give thanks daily for all those small and large surprises in our lives. It is there in the surprises of the world, just like the words of Jesus from the day, that they you will see the risen Christ. Our surprise this day is that God loves us. He's not letting go of us. He loves us for eternity, and he has given us new life through the risen Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All creation praises you. The earth hums, the sea, seas pulse, the, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious, harmony, harmo, glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the country of the world experienced in disunity and conflict. We, we set our minds on fears and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep 
and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. Especially this day, we pray for those who are, who are suffering from the coronavirus, those who have lost loved ones. Fill them with this beautiful surprise of, of resurrection hope of, of life eternal. Be with the doctors, the nurses, the medical staff around the world who are, who are treating patients and coming up with solutions. Relieve the fears this day of, of the world. May we continue to trust in your goodness and love. May we put our faith and trust in the risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for our brothers and sisters here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church and around the world who stand in need of your healing presence in their lives at this time. We pray for Betty and Kathy. We pray for Cynthia and Darren. We pray for Doris and Marge Garkey and Marge Sampson. We pray for Marguerite and, and Mary. We pray for Nancy and Neil. We pray for Jenna and Terry. We pray now in the silence of our hearts, those who stand in need of God's warming touch in their lives this resurrection day. Lord God, be with Holly and, and Ed this day. Be with those who have grieving loss of loved ones, especially Debbie, this day. Give patience to our community and maybe may we be filled with an expectation of the future where we come together as one in the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, be with our military, Kelly, Sam, and, and Caleb, and be with those who suffer from quiet illnesses this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died, especially Leroy and Ken, Keith, Richard, Pat, and Eddie. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we, we place all for whom we, we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray for you this day. I pray for you every day. I long for the day to see you face to face. Go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.
Or so. 